Salutation second graders and welcome to math lesson 28 on our mobile learning platform. Today we're going to talk a little bit about decimals. Now we haven't done decimals yet this year and we will not be able to finish the whole chapter but we're going to do our best to get a good introduction so we are ready for third grade. Alrighty, get out your uh, math pages. Today we're looking at pages 280. Oh no, I'm sorry. 300, I knew 200 wasn't right, 307, 308. 307, 308, get that out in front of you. Here we are, friends. Okay, so we are on chapter 11, decimals, and in Leviticus 27, 32, we read, every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. Therefore, boys and girls, in this verse, the word tithe is used to indicate a tenth. God called the tithe the tenth, to be holy or dedicated to him. Boys and girls, Christians, many Christians dedicate one-tenth of their incomes to the Lord. How do you think tithing might show love for God and others? How do you think? Hmm, let's think about it. Giving one-tenth of everything we had would be sharing, right? We're sharing that the Lord has promised that if his people give generously back to his church, he will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessings upon them. Boys and girls, we should make sure that we are tithing or giving, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing in this chapter. We will be working on place value. Ooh, we know place value, right? Ones, tens, hundreds. Well, there are other place values on the other side of the decimal point, and we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to learn a little bit about decimals and relating them to fractions. A decimal is part of a whole, just like a fraction, okay? And decimals, uh, let's see, relating fractions to decimals and reading writing, comparing, and ordering decimals. So we're gonna get familiar with them. We may even have time to learn to add and subtract them and using decimals in relating money to them. Okay, so let's look in your packet at the pages, 307 to, and 308. And the first picture has a picture of a scorpion. It says 11.1 .1 in the top, corner and its decimal place value. Let's read the blue square together. Many desert animals live in the Sonoran Desert in Arizona. A scorpion is a desert insect that has large front claws and a stinger on its tail. Phoenix, Arizona is a desert city. It is 107.8 miles from Tucson, Arizona. So listen, that's 107.8 or 107 and 8 tenths of a mile of my uh, miles from Tucson, Arizona. The decimal number 107.8 means 107 and 8 tenths. Oh, there's that decimal and the and. Remember, we've been working all year on the and and I told you it had to do with decimals. The same distance in kilometers is 173 and 48 kilometers or 173 and 48 one hundredth kilometers. Okay, boys and girls, it looks like I am having a little bit of technical difficulties. We're gonna try to keep going. If it continues, I'm gonna stop the video and we'll have to come back to it later. Okay, a decimal number uses place value to show a part of a whole. Decimal numbers use a decimal point, a small dot, to separate the whole numbers from the decimal numbers. One place to the right of the decimal point is the tenths place. So here are the place values that we are familiar with, right? We have the ones, tens, hundreds. And then look friends, they put in the decimal point. And if you go to the right of the decimal point, you're dealing with tenths. Notice the TH, that tells us we're on the right side of the decimal point. Okay, two places to the right of the decimal point is the hundredths place. Remember, looking for the th tells us we're on the right side of the decimal point. So friends, we are going to write the numbers in the correct places on each chart. Let's start with the examples. And where would I put the 107 and 
eight tenths. Um, Bradley, put the one in the hundreds place, put the zero in the tenths place, the seven in the ones place. Look, the decimal's already there. And eight tenths. Good job, Bradley. All right, Lola, can you do 173 and 48 hundredths? Okay, the one in the hundreds place, the seven in the tenths place, three in the ones place, four in the tenths place, and eight in the hundredths place. Great work. All right, we're going to write the numbers in the correct places on each chart. Okay, friends, this is practice. So I am going to do numbers one and three. You will do numbers two and four on your own. All right, number one says, one and six tenths. Everybody say it with me. One and six tenths. So how am I going to put that in the box, Caesar? One, one, six tenths. Excellent. Doing number three, Emma, same thing. I have one and 62 tenths. Okay, one and 62, oh, I'm sorry, 62 hundredths. Ms. Mrs. Mueller had that wrong. Okay, guys, stay with me. One and 62 hundredths. Ready? How am I gonna do it, Emma? One and 62 hundredths. Awesome possum. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. If I did, that's okay. You can do it with me after we're done. Turn your paper over. Let's go ahead and get some more practice. We're going to fill in the chart. If there are no ones, write a zero in the ones place on the chart. It's called a placeholder, and we'll make sure that we show it with a zero. Are you ready? So number five is right here, and we need to put three hundredths. Everybody listen. Say it with me. Number five is three hundredths. We need to write it in the chart. How do you think we do that? Jackson. Zero in the ones, zero in the tenths, three in the hundredths. And we say it again, guys, three hund hundredths. Good. Let's do number six together. Number six says what? Can you read me that number, Giovanni? There are no ones. It says 41 hundredths. So how am I going to write it in the chart, Jojo? A zero for the ones, a four in the tenths, and a one in the hundredths. Awesome possum. Good job, friends. Okay, I want you to do the very best you can. I want you to continue down the chart, and we'll come back and check it when we're done. Now we're going to circle the digit in the ones place. Oh, guys, this should, not, this should be pretty easy. Let's look at it and think about it for just a minute together. The ones place is the digit to the left of the decimal point. So here's my decimal point, right? Here's my ones place. Agree? Thumbs up if you agree. Good job. Okay, Sean, what's my digit in my ones place on number 13? Zero is correct, good. Okay, so you'll do 14, 15, and 16. Let's look at number 17. We're gonna circle the digit in the tenths place. Well, guys, Remember, it has the and that TH tells us it's on the right-hand side of the decimal point. So we have one and 18 hundredths. What's my tenth? What number is in the tenth place? Um, Tino. One is the second one, right? The number to the right of the decimal point. Okay, and then one and 26 hundredths, Tessa. What number's in the tenth place? It's the two, very good. All right, now let's circle the digit in the hundredths place. Guys, you'll do 19, 20, and 21 on your own. Go to the next section, 22 through 26. We'll do 22 and 23 together. Circle the digit in the hundredths place. Now remember, the hundredths place shows the TH, so it's gonna go two places to the right of the decimal. So two and 34 hundredths. Reagan, what number is in my hundredths place? 
a four. Good. Four and fifty-nine hundredths. What number is in the hundredths place? Kylie. Nine. Very good. And you guys will keep going, okay? Then let's look down here at the bottom. You're going to just review adding, subtracting, multiplying, multiplying, and subtracting. Second graders, I think you can do these. Stop the video. Do the best you can. Come back to check your work. Bye, friends. All right. If you came back. You're ready to check your work with me. Here we go. I'm just putting the numbers in the correct places on the chart. So where do I put three and eight tenths? The three goes in the where, Jacob? Ones column. And the eight goes in the tenths column. Good. Now we're doing three and 85 hundredths. Uh, let's go with Joshua. Three in the ones column, eight in the tenths column. Five in the hundreds column. All right, second graders, moving on. Number seven says 63 hundredths. What do I put in the ones column? That's right, it's a zero. And how many tenths? A six. How many hundredths? Excellent. All right, then we have one and 75 hundredths. How many ones? One. How many tenths? How many hundredths? Excellent, second graders. So far, so good. All right, Mila, can you do the next one? Number nine says two and twelve hundredths. So what goes in the ones column? A two. What goes in the tenths column? Good. And then the hundredths column is a? Very good. All right. Then we have four and four hundredths. Um, Trinity, what number goes in the ones column? It's a four. Uh-oh, Mrs. Mueller's having a little bit of difficulty. Let's keep going. We have four and what number goes in the tenths column? We're looking here. It would be the zero, right? And then what? Four in the hundredths column. Good work. All right, let's see. Jax, can you tell me three and 78 hundredths? What am I going to put there? Three in the ones column, seven in the tenths column, and eight in the hundredths column. Good. All right, Lola, what are you going to circle on number 14 for the digit in the ones place? One. Good, Lola. All right, Sonia, what number are you going to circle for the number in the ones place on number 15? Good. And number 16, what are you going to circle, Jackson? Number one, good. All right, which digit is in the tenths place? Pay attention, guys. The number to the right of the decimal point is an eight. Good job. All right, Max, how about a number 20? I have four hundredths. What number is the tenths place? It's a zero. Good job, Caesar. One and 93 hundredths. Number in the tenths place is the nine. Excellent. All right. Circle the digit in the hundredths place. What did you get for 38 hundredths? Um, Caesar, did you go? Go ahead and go again. Caesar, 38 hundredths. It's the eight. Good. And then Sean, six and 78 hundredths. What's your number? Good. It's eight. And then one and 24 hundredths, Tino, it's a four. Good, all right, we're going to add. And in second grade, we like to draw our columns. And so, Kylie, what's five plus nine? 16, write the six down, regroup the one. I have six plus four plus four plus one. Well, I know six plus four is 10. One plus four is five, 10 plus five is 15. Write the five down, regroup the one. Then I have three plus two is five, plus one is six, plus one is seven, 756. How many of you got that? Good job, second graders. All right, then we're gonna subtract. I have 4,802 minus 1,958. 
So what did you do? Can I take eight away from two? I cannot cross out the two, cross out the zero, cross out the eight, because we can't borrow from a zero, right? Eight becomes a seven, the zero becomes the 10, cross out the 10, it's a nine, and the 12, what's, or two becomes a 12, because two plus 10 is 12. 12 minus eight is four, nine minus five is four, seven minus nine, uh-oh, can't do it, what do I have to do? Go next door and borrow, right? Okay, so cross out the four, the four becomes a three, the seven becomes a 17. Second graders, it looks like I'm lost what I'm doing. So I'm gonna just continue until I'm done with this problem. And then I'm gonna tell you do the best you can. Okay, we're gonna have 17 minus nine is eight, and three minus one is two, 2,844. And I'm not sure, friends, what's going on, but I'm having technical difficulties. So I'm not going to take any more of your time today. Best you can do. Have a great day. Join me soon for some more mobile learning. Bye, friends.